You talked earlier about Blake Schneider's Save the Cat. Yeah. And you take a lot from his outlining advice? Yeah, he had, um, and I said I said earlier, 16 beats, it's 15 beats. He has the, the main, the main, the 15 beats um, in his story. Um, and, you know, uh, they, um, you know, they, they, they pretty much follow an order and take you through the story. Um, but they definitely are, I think a great guide and goalposts to telling, you know, your story and doing an effective way. Um, and, um, you know, they really hit on again, and it goes back to, I've said it a few times, working smarter, not harder, being able to, once you have a clear log line and you're, okay, this is the story I want to tell. It's, it's concise and it's just, you know, it's 30 to 30 to 40 words. Um, then you start, you want to start breaking it apart. And I feel like, you know, it starts with a character and from there you basically fill in that character's journey. Um, you know, from, um, you know, the, uh, the first part, I know it's always great as he has opening image and the opening image is what's the first thing we say? What's the first thing to remember? And I think that's such a great exercise. It's like, how do you want to open the story? What do you want the first thing people see about your see about your character, and what's it? What kind of impact is it going to have on them? Um, you know, when it goes all the way through, telling talking about theme, what's the inciting incident? You know, uh, the turn, the first act turn, the midpoint. I will say that I feel like, and and he did mention this is in in his book is that um, the midpoint is really the backbone of the story, as he said. I believe it's. What you hang everything on, because the midpoint basically is is that center point of the story, and it does the reversal of really of where that story is going to turn and go off in. You know, um, a lot of that uh, the reversal of the char- for the character really, it's such an imperative uh, beat in the character's journey, our hero's journey. Uh, you know, and then it goes through, you know, the third act turn, what's the climax, and then finally, what's the last image we see? And if you think about it and you really apply that and you, again, reference any number of script, but uh, reference the movies, you really get a good sense of, you know, seeing, you know, again, um, uh, we talked about Saving Private Ryan. The film version, you see the elderly man at the end, at the beginning and then at the end, and they like to have those bookends. A lot of writers like to have the, the bookends. I sometimes have bookends and it's, you know, I think it's it's great to tie up one, one and then the other. I know uh, one film that I loved uh, most recently uh, that I've seen in years, or one of the films I loved most recently uh, was 1917. And it began and ended the same way. And it was, you know, obviously just breathtaking, a breathtaking uh, journey that we went on. And, um, but yeah, they, you know, again, identifying those beats and having your character adhere to it. And it doesn't have to be so rigid. I mean, again, they're guideposts and they're goalposts and everyone's is different. Um, But I know for me that when I do set out, it helps me really determine where my character needs to go in the story. Do you believe anyone can learn to write a screenplay that will sell? Well, There are a, a ton of factors that go into that. Um, you know, a lot of your viewers have probably heard over the years that, you know, you don't write what is fashionable at the moment because then after you finish writing a script, you could spend six months, a year on it. The market's already moved on. Um, so I, I, I think again, it goes back to, you can write a script about anything. And the most important thing is that your readers and you care about the character or characters you're writing about. Because if you're just writing it to the market, you're just writing it to make, you know, for a big spec sale, which really don't happen that that much anymore. They've kind of gone away. (laughs) Um, The marketplace has completely changed. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those things where, um, I think you again have to write the story that you feel compelled to. And again, if you're not caring about your characters, you, the writer, are not 
your readers and your audience or not? Um, it's a, I mean, it's a tricky question. I think anyone can write a script that sells um, those factors. And then you have to have somebody, a, a producer, an actor who are going to really believe in it. Um, you know, the, the, the business has changed so much that now it seems, you know, especially if you're not going the studio route, you have to get attachments. You have to have actors, you know, attached or a director and then the actor comes in and then you'll attract financing for it and, and financing at all various levels. Um, there have been many terrific screenwriters in, in recent years I've heard about who have written tremendous spec scripts, terrific specs that haven't sold. Um, again, because the business has changed so much, what you're seeing, you know, at the, you know, you can just, you know, anyone can go and see what's at the cinema or what's not at the cinema right now, but what had been pre-COVID you know, it's it's sequels, prequels, comic books, adaptations. There's really not a whole lot of original material, maybe some horror and comedy films that are getting through. But there just really isn't, there's a, there's a dearth of, you know, uh, creative material that's not happening. And um, I, I would just say that, you know, you have to write what is true to you. I... I also would say that, you know, don't, you know, um, don't write about yourself, that old adage, don't write about yourself, just try to write a compelling story, uh, tell a story, not your story, um, which I think, and again, I've known many writers starting out who wanted to tell their life story and with all respect, uh, you know, unless you're you know, some, you've got some really incredible, rich, just messed up and there are many who do but um you know stick to writing about what you know not about yourself per se i think um and you just never know who's going to be interested anything can happen you you may you know you still may send it into an agency or for looking for representation and they love it and they go out with it um you could send it to a producer you could have that actor friend who knows this well-known actor, established actress, and they get it in their hands and they love it and they want to do it. Um, I have a friend right now who um, uh, called up an old connection who's a, a well-known TV actor and he he loved her script and he wants to do it. He's, he's in. Um, but then it's a matter of getting other actors attached and getting actors who are going to get it, who are they're going to bring in and, and um, uh, be a value, especially if you're going to pre-sell the script in the in the states, overseas, wherever. So there's so many factors that go into it now. Um, but I think then it just it does always boil down to the fact of and comes back to, you know, writing a compelling script. But you're just never gonna gonna know where it's going to take you or or how people are gonna react.